buckaroos. This is your old pal, Gabby Hayes, coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir, -y Bob. You know, buckaroos, I sure had a good time the other day. <laughs> I went to one of them uh, circuses, you know. Oh, I like circuses. I like to watch them actor bats, you know, how they jump around, twist in the air. <laughs> and I, I like the animals, you know, the lions and the tigers and all those things. But I guess I like the jugglers better than anything else. They always remind me of an old uncle of mine, Juggler Hayes, he was an old ass. There was the greatest juggler in the whole United States. And Texas, yes, sir. Oh, nothing for him to take old 30 or 40 tennis balls, you know, and keep them in the air all the time. One time he, he took 18 glasses of water, juggled them in the air, and never spilled one drop. Oh, he was a juggler. Well. He was given a big exhibition, you know, one time out there in the West, and he was going to juggle ten great big boulders. Well, sir, they was the biggest rocks you ever laid your eyes on. Finally, he got them all up in the air like that. Big windstorm come up and just blowed them through the air. They didn't come down till he got way out there in the valley. They're right there to this very day. Yes, sir. It's called the Boulder Dam. That's how that happened to be there. Do you know it? Well. Our yarn today is about the Cheyenne kid who was sent out by the marshal's office to straighten out a crooked town. Well, naturally, he began asking questions. He found out that Fred Jackson was shot in jail and Price Taylor was setting his own price on everything. Just relax and you won't get hurt. All right, boys, take a look through that stuff. And hurry it up. Are you all right? I guess so, thanks to you. I'm certainly surprised this old buckboard stayed together. Is there anything we can do to help Miss, uh... Abby Jackson's my name. I'm Cheyenne Davis, and this is Fuzzy Jones, my poetic sidekick. How do you do? How do you do? It looks like you were fixing up for a big feed here. Mm, I was. Let's see if we can't save some of this grub for the lady, Fuzzy. Uh, you don't seem to remember that poem I read you about women, do you? Never mind the poem, let's get to work. Good morning, Abby. I'm sorry about your father, Abby. Why should you be sorry? You got what you wanted, didn't you? No, that isn't what I wanted. Well, what is it then? I'd like you to tell me what you know about Price Taylor. Dad might have told you a few things, but thanks to you, he won't be talking to anyone. Just that does it, she won't talk, and that fancy pants won't talk, and nobody in town will even give us a look. I figure we're whipped. No, we're not. Go out and rustle up some gunny sacks. So what? You heard what I said. Go on, beat it. I'll meet you back here. It's a little large in the waistline, but I figure we can take it in a little bit. Hold that sack open, Fuzzy. Hey, jumping Jennifer. Are you buying grub at these prices? Information comes high these days. You ain't kidding. Now, 
Try to act like a vigilante. Surprised to see a couple of strangers, but somebody had to do the work. Frank Jackson is dead. Dead? Well, what's to become of us? All of us. Frank was a good man, a great man. But I don't suppose there's any need to tell you that. Well, as a matter of fact, we just joined up. And the vigilantes don't feel much like talking about him. It don't take much to understand that. How long ago did he join the vigilantes? He didn't join them, he started them. He's been leading them ever since them thugs shot him up and tried to run him out of the country. Who did that? Well, nobody could prove nothing because the sheriff's on the other side, but Frank was trying to start a trucking outfit, and that meant competition for Price Taylor. For Price Taylor? Did you hear what he said? That's right. Now, Frank had got things going. Price wouldn't have been able to squeeze every last cent out of the folks around here. Thanks. Now I'm beginning to see a lot of things. Oh, it's us that owes you the thanks. If it hadn't been for you vigilantes, we'd have starved. I can understand that. It won't take but a minute to heat a cup of coffee. Will you stay? No, thanks. Good luck. Alone. Well, it's kind of hard to say, ma'am, but we figured we'd done you a bad turn. Now we'd like to help out. And you can help us out. I don't think so. You're wrong, Abby. You can help. We want to use your printing press. Printing press? I don't know what you're talking about. Unless I'm very much mistaken, you and your father put out a little paper called The Vigilante. Makes you think so. I thought maybe that was printer's ink on your fingers. No, of course not. It's just grease from fixing the wagon wheel. Well, what do you know? If I didn't know the little lady didn't have a printing press here, you know what I'd say this was? I'd swear it was a piece of type they use when they're setting up printing. Well, you can take a look around if you want to. There's no printing press. Look, Abby. We think Price Taylor is behind the gang that killed your dad. If you'll help us, we think we can prove it. Supposing I don't believe you. Better show sure your authority. Once Abby Jackson was sure that Cheyenne was the law, the vigilante press started rolling. What it printed didn't make everybody happy. The Vigilante promises to expose the scandal in tomorrow's edition that will break the town wide open. The criminals are known. They include some of our prominent citizens and public officials who have been giving and taking bribes to feather their own nests. Yeah, yeah, I know. I read it. Well, when are you going to do something about it? Well, I got a hunch Cheyenne is in on it. Now, we can cook up a charge against him easy enough. Now, why don't I take some of the boys and go out and get it? I'll take care of Cheyenne if I have to. You just take your orders from me. Sure, Price. First, I've got to stop that paper. And if you want to continue to be sheriff around here, it's best that you find out where it's coming from. Well, you know the boys have searched every cabin in the county. Oh, shut up and listen to me. I've got a plan. Are you going out to the hideout and bring back Check and Shanks? Can we come in? Why, sure. Come in, boys. Hi, Sheriff. How are you feeling today? Oh, good enough. Mm, I see your arm's all right now. 
You mind if we talk to you alone? Oh, of course not. He was just going. He has lots to do. We've got some news for you, Price. Something you want to know. But first, we'd like to be paid for the job we did for you. Well, of course, if you want to change your mind, uh, you've got it coming to you. This uh, news is going to cost you $14.20 extra. And what are you trying to pull off? You'd give a lot more to know where that newspaper's coming from. Well, this better be right. It's right. The press is in Frank Jackson's cabin, underneath a pile of wood by the stove. I think you'll find Abby working on the next edition tonight. Well, thanks, boys. Oh, uh, just a minute. Why the $14.20? To repair debt. What's that debt you was talking about? The debt to me? Huh? I thought it would be kind of nice if Price paid for the grub we bought for those old people. Oh. <laughs> Sharp. See? It's easy. Huh. Suppose they call our bluff and wait for us to print all these facts that we don't have. They won't. If I'm writing my hunts that the sheriff is taking bribes, he'll be worried sick. My money says he'll show up here first. I got it. <laughs> There's a beauty. I got a warrant for your arrest. What's the charge? What are you doing here? What's the charge? Criminal libel and printing malicious lies. Where's your proof? Right here. Hey, don't get yourself all head up. If you want one of these so bad, run yourself off a copy. That's libelous matter, and I order you to hand it over. It ain't not out of libelous. I brought it myself. Then you're going to jail, too. Oh, now, Sheriff, it ain't that bad. Why, I dedicated this to you. If a guy's afraid to fight, he's just yeller. If he yells when he gets hurt, he's just a punk. But if he cheats another fella, then by gosh, that critter is a skunk. Let me see that. Ah, uh, not so fast. Here's another one you might like. The guy that shot Frank Jackson in the back wasn't very brave now, was he? That yellow rat won't live much longer before he's got to deal with Fuzzy. Not bad, huh? Find any liable, Sheriff? That don't make no difference. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Who's gonna stop me? You might get hasty and do something you'll be sorry for. Yeah, we didn't want you breaking up our property, so we bought this printing press from Abby. So we wouldn't have any more trouble with you, and here's the bill of sale for it. Now get out. Get out. Well, we're on the right track, anyhow. First, they try to make it look legal. Now they send the strong arm boys. We better get ready. They ought to be coming pretty soon if they're coming. You awake, Fuzzy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuzzy, here they are. About two minutes. Don't look like nobody's here. I don't like it. You stay out here and keep your eyes open.
All right, reach. Now you reach. Now it's your turn, reach. I never saw so many people take so many guns away from so many people in such a short time in my life. All right, boys, now you're gonna spill a few beans. Yeah, and they ain't gonna cost a dollar and a half a pound. didn't exactly like the visit that Price's boys paid him, but he figured he ought to be sociable, so he returned the visit. He knowed he wasn't very popular, so he wasn't exactly expecting any treat. Now, I treat you boys right when you treat me right. But I don't like mistakes, and this time there aren't going to be any mistakes. Do you get it? We're in luck. Get in the back room, quick. Come on, hurry up. Oh, hello, boys. What can I do for you? You can come along with us, for one thing. You're under arrest. Oh, so that's it. <laughs> What's the charge? Bribery of public officials to start with, but we'll prove murder before we're through. Let's get going. Sit down. Now, don't be bashful, boys. Come on out. You're a fool, Cheyenne. You can't pin anything on me. We'll find out. Well, even if what you say is true, you can't make it stick. I'm the law around this part of the country. This is gonna make me feel a lot better. Check, put a gun in his holster. Ain't nobody can say I didn't kill in self-defense. Uh, you're another one of them pole cats that shoot a fella in the back. On her back, it makes no difference to me. Set him up, Jake. All right, Price. Count to three. On three, we both fire. One. Two. Close. I'm going to stop it. You're right. It's suicide.
There may be others inside. Take a look. Whoever's in there is coming out feet first. I think Shy can take care of himself. Sure put him out of business this time. <laughs> and uh, next time, remember what I told you about women. <laughs> now, folks, uh, I'd like to dedicate this occasion by Reciting a little poem I wrote. Remember what I told you, Fuzzy? As I was about to say before I was so rudely interrupted. I warned you. Quiet. I, uh... <laughs> you and your women. Well, that's the end of that one. Sure was a humdinger, wasn't it? Yes, sir, -y, Bob. Yes, sir, you know, that Cheyenne was awful fast with that whip of his. Yep, quicker than lightning. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of lightning, that reminds me of an old uncle of mine. Lightning Hayes, he was an old ass. There was the quickest man in the whole world. Why, he'd start for town, and before he got there, he'd meet himself coming back. That's how quick he was. Oh, he was fast, that fella. Well, one time there was a terrific lightning storm come up. Oh, you never... Well, it just lit up the sky all the way from Sacramento, California, to Altoona, Pennsylvania. You never did see such a bright sky in your life. Well, my, my uncle, he was sitting in the house, and he seen this, and it gave him an ID. He went out in the kitchen, got himself a milk bottle, went out on the back porch, and waited for another bolt of lightning to strike. Well, when it did, he just reached out like that with that milk bottle. He caught that lightning in the bottle and just covered it up like that. You want to know something? Turned out to be the first electric light the world has ever known. Yes, sir. You're turned tootin', sirry Bob. Good morning, Abby. I'm sorry about your father, Abby. Why should you be sorry? You got what you wanted, didn't you? No, that isn't what I wanted. Well, what is it then? I'd like you to tell me what you know about Price Taylor. Dad might have told you a few things, but thanks to you, he won't be talking to anyone. Just that does it. She won't talk, and that fancy pants won't talk, and nobody in town will even give us a look. I figure we're whipped. No, we're not. 
Go out and rustle up some gunny sacks. So what? You heard what I said. Go on, beat it. I'll meet you back here. It's a little large in the waistline, but I figure we can take... This your old pal Gabby Hayes coming at you with another one of them rip roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir, -y Bob. You know, Buckaroos, I sure had a good time the other day. <laughs> I went to one of them circuses, you know. Oh, I like circuses. I like to watch them actor bats, you know, how they jump around, twist in the air. <laughs> and I, I like to animals. <laughs> Are you all right? I guess so, thanks to you. I'm certainly surprised this old buckboard stayed together. Is there anything we can do to help Miss, uh... Abby Jackson's my name. I'm Cheyenne Davis, and this is Fuzzy Jones, my poetic sidekick. How do you do? How do you do? It looks like you were fixing up for a big feed here. Mm, I was. Let's see if we can't save some of this grub for the lady, Fuzzy. Uh, you don't seem to remember that poem I read you about women, do you? Never mind the poem, let's get to work. That's how that happened to be there, do you know it? Well, our yarn today is about the Cheyenne kid who was sent out by the marshal's office to straighten out a crooked town. Well, naturally, he began asking questions. He found out that Fred Jackson was shot in jail and Price Taylor was setting his own price on everything. <laughs> Just relax and you won't get hurt. All right, boys, take a look through that stuff. And hurry it up. You know, the lions and the tigers and all those things. But I guess I like the jugglers better than anything else. They always remind me of an old uncle of mine, Juggler Hayes, he was an old ass. There was the greatest juggler in the whole United States, and Texas, yes, sir. Oh, nothing for him to take old 30 or 40 tennis balls, you know, and keep them in the air all the time. One time, he, he took 18 glasses of water, juggled them in the air, and never spilled one drop. Oh, he was a juggler. Well. He was given a big exhibition, you know, one time out there in the West, and he was going to juggle ten great big boulders. Well, sir, they was the biggest rocks you ever laid your eyes on. Finally, he got them all up in the air like that. Big windstorm come up and just blowed them through the air. They didn't come down till he got way out there in the valley. They're right there to this very day. Yes, sir. It's called the Boulder Dam. 